Hi, and today I'm going to be interviewing Sandra White, the MSP for Glasgow Kelvin. So, um, the first question is, um, what happened? Like, is there a significant event in your life that made you want to become a politician? Well, first of all, good morning and thank you very much for inviting me along and I look forward to many more sessions yeah. and uh, for, for the future as well. Good luck to you. Uh, originally, I got involved in politics uh, through community politics. Uh, where I stayed, there was no tenants association, no community involvement, uh, no play schemes or nurseries. Uh -huh. uh, so I decided that uh, I would start up a play scheme, uh, that type of thing, uh, for the local community, which was very successful in the area. And then someone said to me, well, if you want to continue funding for this, uh, perhaps you should uh, see the council and get elected to your local council. At that time, I, I wasn't a member of any political party, but I had always affiliated yeah. with the SNP and voted for them. So I decided that I would join the SNP and the by-election came about in 1989 and I stood in that by-election and I got elected with 16 of a majority. <laughs> <laughs> and from then on, uh, obviously built it up and yeah. then you know, stood for the Scottish Parliament election. I was fortunate to get elected yeah. in 1999. And you've just been like in the in that seat ever since. No, I originally went. I lived in Paisley at the time, and it was a Fox Bar, which I contested with the sixteen majority. Uh, but I did come from Glasgow and then moved back into Glasgow. My friends all stay in in the West End in this area, and they had asked me through the branch, uh, would I like to stand in what, what was Hillhead at the yeah. time, and I said yes. That's good. <laughs> um, and. We were wondering, like, what you for like young people that were maybe interested in politics, what you thought was the most important attributes for becoming a politician. Uh, for me, the most important attributes for a politician is that uh, you care about people, you have ideas, ideals, uh, and you want to see the, them fulfilled, not for your own sake, but for the community's sake as well. So, an interest in people, I think, is a great attribute, and uh, empathy with people. Uh, and caring about the environment you live in mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, um, and we're like obviously since Alex Salmond has recently resigned after the referendum, and Nicola Sturgeon looks like she'll be taking over in the next couple of weeks. And um, do you have any like idea of how you think she'll change the SNP? I think she'll change not just the SNP, but the process of politics. Yeah. Uh, Alec obviously you know very accessible. Uh, Nicola is also very accessible but has made you know, basically a pledge it should be even more accessible and politics will be more accessible to people. She's already starting around the country speaking to people. Obviously we know the Hydro yeah. 12,000 uh, venue has been sold out. So I think she'll make politics much more accessible to people that uh, people who perhaps haven't been interested will see that politics does affect their lives and Nicola will certainly bring yeah. politics to the people. Yeah, and it's also I think very good how she'll be like the first woman first minister and and, um, and we're all, like obviously our blog is aimed at young people mm -hmm. and we want to get young people interested in politi politics so um, we're wondering um, like if you, young people in our local area wanted to go about to change something on a large scale like how would they go about it? I've done many talks in the various schools, this, this school as well as others and that issue comes up a lot uh, if there's a particular interest if, if there's a particular issue that the uh, young people here in the area, perhaps lack of uh, facilities for them to go to, whether it be youth clubs, sports, etc, etc, they can put a petition into the Scottish Parliament. Mm -hmm. uh, one person can put a petition in, you can put it online as an e-petition, or a group of people can put that petition in. I'll give you an example, mm -hmm. if you like. It was a school where they had nowhere to put their backpacks, and the kids were saying, well, obviously it was affecting their shoulders, and their health and their backs. So they had a petition from the school, uh, brought it to the petitions committee, spoke to the petition, and got the, the rules changed in their particular school and others, that they would have lockers to leave their backpacks. So if you go through the parliament system, yeah. through a petition, then you can, you can actually get something done as well. Yeah, um, and like quite a lot of young people nowadays, they don't really seem to be that interested in politics. So um, do you think there's like a way that young people can get more interested in politics or I, I think the I think the referendum, you know, certainly 
brought younger people yeah, into definitely. politics. When you look at the percentage of age groups that voted yes, uh, and I'm just saying that because obviously I uh, support the yes mm -hmm. cause, uh, I think that really, you know, kick-started a lot of interest from younger people in politics. We certainly, not just myself, but other politicians from all parties got lots of invites, probably one a week during the referendum, to speak to 14 to 16 year old age group and that certainly engaged with them. So I think, you know, not just getting politicians to come into to schools to talk, but, you know, having an interest, young people coming along to the Scottish Parliament, for instance, mm -hmm. perhaps even doing a day's coverage in the, the Parliament, like a mentoring system uh, with politicians, which I've certainly done uh, before. Uh, either in the parliament or in the constituency office. So I think that gets people interested, not necessarily in their career in politics, but it lets them see exactly how varied the work of a politician is. Yeah. Um, so that I'm open to anyone from here or the school wanting to come along to, to speak to myself and uh, in regards to maybe one day a week in the Scottish Parliament or certainly in the constituency office. Yeah. And um, on the subject of independence, do you think that um, the like future independence of Scotland is uh, like a disappearing subject, or do you think it will like keep on being discussed and talked about? I, it will certainly keep on being discussed and, and, and talked about. Uh, certainly, you know, I've been at meetings. I came back from Edinburgh on Wednesday for the launch of the Yes Bar, mm -hmm. which is perhaps maybe we will order for yourselves, uh, basically. But um, it was amazing the amount of people that turned up for for, for that. It was an official yes opening. People in the streets still talking, people wearing yes badges, the, the rise in the membership of the SNP, uh, obviously, you know, is proof mm, that yeah. the independence uh, will not go away. And certainly I can't predict the future, but I would see uh, the next uh, referendum, 2016. That's exactly what the next question oh, right. was. <laughs> but no, but yeah, um, we, think, we think that it is like, really important for like just to keep being discussed and like making sure that um, the views of Scottish people on that subject like don't disappear. Um, and um, like as Glasgow like voted yes by what was it fifty one percent? Yes, it certainly. I suppose if you take the medium, it was fifty one percent. I think it was fifty three in Kelvin constituency and fifty six or fifty seven in the medium yeah. area. So yeah. And like, why do you think that? Um, Glasgow voted yes, whereas the majority of the country voted no. Well, I honestly thought it was going to be yes because I was working in Glasgow and it was just amazing. Uh, it was fantastic. The, the engagement, the feeling that everyone had in the area. I think what happened in, in, in cases in Glasgow, it's obviously for many years been a Labour stronghold. Uh, many people live out in disadvantaged areas. The different groups, it wasn't political parties that did this. It was people like Radical Independence and Artists for Independence, uh, particularly Radical Independence anyway, they went out to these disenfranchised people in certain areas and they, had, they, they saw a future. They had nothing to lose mm -hmm. and certainly they engaged with the people who had, one, had never voted before and they wanted a change, they wanted something there for them. So I think that's why Glasgow did vote yes, whereas other areas, when you look at who the areas that voted yes, we're all very much in the west of Scotland yeah. uh, in that respect, uh, and working class areas, labour strongholds. So they had nothing to lose and they saw a future for themselves. And I do thank all the different groups that went out, uh, mostly from non political parties. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, they, they wanted something and they saw something there that, that they could engage and belong to society again. And certainly, I believe that's what put the vote up so, yeah. so much in Glasgow. Yeah. Um, and why do you think that social justice is so important, especially in Glasgow? For years, how many years now? Oh, 70, 80 years, whatever it may be. You've had people who are so disenfranchised, uh, you know, who are out in these sticks, the environment they live in, they couldn't get a job. You're looking at third generation people who have been disadvantaged. And I think it's really important. Glasgow's a powerhouse yeah. of Scotland. It's an absolute powerhouse that creates wealth. And these people deserve to belong to that and deserve to belong to the society. They feel completely let down yeah. by various governments who really, you know, the same areas, just need to look at them, have been in a poverty situation for 50 years. Yeah, I mean, if we want a society that we want to live in and we believe in, everybody's got to benefit from that society. 
and that's why it's really important that we do get young people engaged, disenfranchised people engaged, because it's up to us to give them a hope. And that's why I think the, the referendum campaign was so successful in Glasgow, yeah. because it gave hope for the future for these people. Um, and like moving on from the referendum, um, what like we see that you've done, um, your latest bill was the blanket ban of parking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wonder if you could like sum up a bit, so for our viewers, the, the responsible parking bill. Uh, at the moment, the responsible parking bill as is at stage one. It's a bit in limbo at the moment uh, because we have lawyers telling us that the Scottish Parliament doesn't have the powers to put this bill through. Uh, but I believe it has, and so lots of us do. So what can I say? Watch this space. I'm determined to get it through before uh, the next term in 2016. I spoke to a number of people here in, in the constituency, and as people started writing in, in regards to the fact that people who were disabled, who were blind, elderly people, uh, couldn't get out of their houses sometimes, their cars parked on the pavement, mm -hmm. uh, then it became nationwide and you know, guide off the blind joined us and safe streets etc. So it was a huge swathe of people with different interests but the main thing was freedom of movement. Uh, it's alright for us, we can go out and walk past the parked car uh, and it, it's designed not to be a punitive measure, it's designed to educate drivers to say these people you know, have a right to be able to walk about as you have as well. I mean we had one case with a gentleman, a blind gentleman was walking along the, the pavement with his stick and there was a car parked there and as he tapped it got caught in the wheel and it snapped. So that gentleman was marooned on the pavement for something like two hours until somebody came along to help him to get home. You have other people in wheelchairs who can't get out shopping or they just can't get out. So the responsible parking bill is something that's very close to my heart and I'm determined uh, to, to get it through before the 2016, the next elections. Yeah, it does seem like a very important thing, like especially around our areas, like the streets yeah. are small. And You also have the situation where it happened to one of my, my staff, when you parked the car, then people completely boxed them in. And then when you went to find out who they belonged to, yeah. they were working three or four streets away. So they had to wait until five o'clock at night to be able to get the car out to go home. And that's not responsible. Yeah. So it helps everybody. Okay, so um, I can see that you're a member of numerous cross-party groups, yeah. um, such as the Palestine, and you're the co-convener of that. So we're just wondering um, like, what you actively do in that group to um, just get the point across. And yeah, there, there's lots of cross-party groups in the Scottish Parliament. Uh, I'm also the convener of the cross-party group and older people age and ageing. And I was a convener of the cross-party group in Palestine. But when I took over as convener, I decided to be absolutely democratic and fair that each party, Labour, Lib Dem, we don't have a Conservative, unfortunately, on that cross-party group, and myself, we would all be co-conveners, so we would all be equal on, on that uh, cross-party group. It's probably one of the biggest cross-party groups in the Parliament. We regularly have between 60 and 80 people attend the cross-party group, which is held quarterly in the Parliament, half past five to eight o'clock, or six o'clock to eight o'clock, depending on parliamentary uh, business. People there are, are, are very passionate about the cause of Palestine, as, as I am as well, and we raise issues uh, that come from the people that attend the cross-party group. We have been very successful in raising various issues, you know, unfortunately due to what's been happening in Palestine. Uh, we can put forward motions on behalf of the cross-party group. We can uh, hold events in the Scottish Parliament to do with the cross-party group, to do with Palestine, and we can raise issues with the ministers there as well, which we have done, and Hamza Yusuf uh, has been very good at coming along and speaking at the cross-party group and supportive in some of the issues we bring forward, such as medical aid for Palestine. Uh, we offered, uh, what the Minister did, uh, offered to bring uh, Palestinians who had been hurt in the, the recent uh, Operation Protection, as they called it, to uh, the Israelis. Um, basically, we had offered to bring them over here and get medical yes. attention, and any refugees that were there, we were happy to bring them in. But obviously, that's a reserve matter. Mm -hmm. Although it's still on the table, uh, we're waiting for the Home Office to come back. We have given them aid in, in monetary terms as well. Uh, so we keep an eye on what's going on in Palestine and to help try and help facilitate. We have groups who uh, facilitate through St Andrews University. We've managed to get a number of Palestinians 
come over and study it. Oh, yeah. it you know, St Andrews University. <clears throat> this came from the group coming to the cross party group. Set, we set up a meeting with the ministers of education, Mike Russell, and from that, uh, two students from Palestine have been able to come over there. So there's lots and lots of work, but it's basically the, what we can do to help yeah. uh, the situation at the moment. Right. That's been really interesting talking oh, to you. So, and thank you very much for coming to um, let us interview you. And we hope that we will um, interest more of our viewers. Because yeah. we have quite a low amount of comments. But anyway, no, that's thank great. You I'll, say, I'll certainly put it on Twitter. And um, perhaps I'll get a wee picture with you and then I can yeah, tweet it as well. Uh, if you want any contributions or anything else, just give us a phone. You know, if you're, you want anything put into your account on the recordings, I'm more than happy to help out that. Thank you. Thanks very much and good luck for the future as Thank I said. You. Thanks Thank a lot.